Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part two to my 2014 U.S. Nationals first place team report. Part one uh, is, will be in the description below. Maybe I'll put a cool little box up here. Uh, but I'm basically covering how I chose all the members of my team because they were chosen very carefully. Um, it wasn't just kind of willy-nilly, and that's how I ended up with three choice items. And the, you know, the decisions and how I got there I think are very important, and um, I'd like to share them with you. So I'm going to continue from where we left off. If you don't remember so far, my team, I'd picked Polytoad and Ludicolo, and I'd already given Polytoad a choice scarf for a couple different reasons. One of the biggest being that I needed to outspeed and one-shot Garchomp, who was clearly the most used Pokemon in VGC 2014 at the time of Nationals, and probably still is right now. However, that leaves me with four slots of undetermined, you know, places for other Pokemon, so... How did I figure out what I wanted to support Politoed Ludicolo with? Well, back at the very, very, very beginning of 2014, before any regionals had even occurred, I was on Showdown, and there was a guy using a team. And I was running, I think, some kind of Sun team. It was popular at the time. I I, I didn't know Sun was popular at the time, but I was running it too. Um, and for good reason. It's very strong. But this guy came out, and I played him on Showdown three or four times, and he absolutely stomped me every single time and he was running Polytoad, Kingdra, Ferrothorn, Mawile and this combination this team has never never left me because I brainstormed with Stampy so much about how to beat this guy because I just couldn't do it and I tried out the team myself for a little bit and it's actually really strong you can see you know rain goes up speeds up Kingdra but it also protects Mawile and Ferrothorn from two of their major weaknesses and, you know, Mawile's other main weakness, what, ground? Yeah, water, super effects, ground types. Garchomp, you know, will get KO'd by Kingdra. So the team itself, just these four, are very strong. The guy who beat me, I don't even think was using anything else. I think it was just a four-mon team. And it was just so good. So this, this never really left me. Now, for my team, I had already decided that Ludicolo fit my needs better than Kingdra would. And um, I think if VGC14, Ludicolo is a stronger pick overall, either way. So... I put in Ludicolo, and I actually tried out these four because I needed at least four Pokemon to try, you know, to test out on Showdown with, just to try to get a feel to see what my team was weak to. So I, I remembered this team, and I put Mawile and Ferrothorn on the back, and just started testing. Well, very soon I found I had some issues. Um, by having Ludicolo in that spot, all of a sudden, Things such as Charizard Y, especially if he got the sun up. Oh my god, that ruined my day every time. And Charizard, you know, very fairly mediumly popular Pokemon. It's not, you know, you're going to see it. It's definitely in the top 20 list. Gyarados, also in that top 20 list. Gave my team a lot of problems. Could intimidate both Ferrothorn and Mawile. Spread paralysis. Couldn't really hit it super effectively. And so, ta so did Talonflame. Talonflame was a huge threat. You know, uh, the Bandit version could one-shot Pytoad sometimes. Definitely get rid of Ludicolo, and if um, the rain wasn't up, or even with the rain up, the Flare Blitzes are doing crazy amounts of damage, or if they're the Will-O-Wisp kind of, you know, more support Talon Flames, those were ruining my day too. So I, I really needed a way to fix this problem. And I thought, okay, why don't I switch out my Megas to Mega Manectric? Look at it, it's got Intimidate for Gyarados and Talon Flame. Electric hits all of them super effectively, and you know, barring a fire move in the sun if I can keep rain up I'm gonna be able to take out all of these things with Mega Manectric it's gonna help this matchup a whole lot even if say Gyarados goes Mega and tries to Earthquake me once he's Mega Ferrothorn and Ludicolo can take care of it so Mega Manectric looks like a pretty good opportunity um, looks like a good fit for the team however there's one one huge issue with that I couldn't beat Mega Venusaur for the life of me, I couldn't do it. Sure, maybe Ferrothorn goes out and stalls it, but it's going to take out the rest of my team, and then it's you know it's uh, its partner can wail on Ferrothorn, or he can just KO Polyto, Ludicolo, and Extra can just use you know four on one my Ferrothorn, and Ferrothorn isn't going to win that. So Mega Manectric, while in theory you know against some of those other threats, Mega Venusaur was rising in popularity at the time, and I was definitely expecting to see it. So I definitely needed some way to really take care of Mega Venusaur. Because my team wasn't doing it at the at this point. Like, not at all. So what did I do? Switched out to a different Mega. Mega Kangaskhan. Now, 
Why is Mega Kangaskhan so good? Well, let's just say it's got one weakness. It's got great defenses. Like, oh my god, it just got huge defense boost. It hits one and a half times. It's like a power band that breaks sashes. But guys, it hits everything pretty much neutrally. Like, it can take out a Charizard if it goes first, depending on the Charizard set. It's going to hit Gyarados really hard. It's going to hit Talonflame really hard. It's going to hit Mega Venusaur really hard. And it's going to survive attack from all of them, barring Overheat in the Sun from certain Charizards. Now, if that Charizard's max speed, then we'll go for a speed tie kind of thing. But if I win that speed tie, I know I'll get the KO there. But otherwise, I'm going to be able to take a hit and do some major damage back. And it did give me a pretty decent way of taking care of Mega Venusaur. At least gave me a pretty good way to hit it. So this was a good start to trying to fix and shore up the team's issues in this department against, you know, these very popular Pokemon at the time. So, I got these four. But I realized in testing, Mega Venusaur clearly was going to still be a problem. But it became a massive problem when you put it next to things such as, you know, fighting types like Machamp and Mian Xiao, Or even next to Talonflame. Like, this was kicking my butt. I needed some way to take care of this issue. Because they're just, they super, the fighting types super affect Kangaskhan. They super affect Ferrothorn. Talonflame, if you get rid of, you know, can chunk a bit about anything here. And if I'm under that kind of direct firepower, I didn't have the time I needed to take care of Mega Venusaur. So, let's go. Next, I had to switch out Ferrothorn for something that was going to help me. Talonflame did this job amazingly. Not only does Talonflame threaten the living daylights out of Mega Venusaur, one of the very few Pokemon in this format that can one-shot it, but it also took care of a lot of these fighting types. It's going to one-shot it too. And... If it's Jolly and Banded, I got a 75% chance of one-shotting 4 HP opponent Talonflames while outspeeding them 100% of the time, assuming that they are adamant. Now, most people run adamant on their Talonflame and just go for that 50-50, hey, if we're both in the field at the same time, let's just see who goes first. I needed Talonflame to outspeed and KO other Talonflames, so I ran Jolly with Band. If I didn't have the Band, I wasn't going to have the firepower to get that KO reliably. With Band, like I said, against 4 HP, 0 Defense, Talonflame, I get the one-shot 75% of the time. I threaten these fighting types, which were giving me a big problem, and I can threaten Mega Venusaur like no other. So Talonflame really, really, you know, came in handy here. But I did need that Band in order to guarantee that 75% chance to one-shot other Talonflame, and basically to just do as much damage as I could as I send it in from the back, kind of like, I don't know, like a Kamikaze pilot trying to do big damage as it sacrifices itself on the field. So right now, let's look at what we got back on the team. Politoed Ludicolo. We know the scarf's on Politoed, but we added two more members here. Kangaskhan and Talonflame, right? Kangaskhan has to have that Mega Stone because we're going Mega Kangaskhan. And I needed the band on Talonflame mostly for other Talonflame. Don't forget, that's what its main role was pretty much there to do. It's to hit the fighting types, which item-wise don't really need anything. But to get other Talonflame, I needed that choice band. So... We're here with two choice items and a Mega Stone. Ludicolo's item still up for grabs with two Pokemon in the back. I went back to see the like the popularity chart of Pokemon in VGC. Now this is a June rankings. So obviously this happened like when July. So this happened the month before Nationals. I was looking at a chart just like this, maybe a month earlier. And what you got here, a lot of Pokemon I felt like I had a pretty good matchup against. Garchomp. Is going to go down to Scarf, Politoed, and Ludicolo so long as the rain's up. Kangaskhan can hit it pretty well, so can Talonflame. Rotom Heat with the rain up. I'm going to do pretty much you know fine with anything that's going to hit it here on the field. Except Talonflame, but I got three Pokemon that can do big damage to it. So that's good. Two of them that can one-shot. Tyranitar I felt pretty confident against. Power Up Punch. I had power or Banded U-Turn on Talonflame. And the rain. Gardevoir not really threatening me too, too, too much here. Especially with Kangaskhan, who can one-shot a lot of Gardevoir. Charizard, so long as I kept the Rain up, and I put Rain Dance on Polytoad for this very reason. I could lead Rain against Charizard and keep Rain Dancing on the field until it mega -ed. Drought comes up first off of the Mega Evolution, and I Rain Dance before it because I outspeed it, and Rain goes back up, and I he either waits a turn and wastes it, Solar Beaming, or he uses a Fire Move for minimal damage. And then there's also Gengar and Scrafty. Um, Scrafty, not too afraid of, to be honest, because if I had... I had the uh, Talonflame here, and also just strong water moves such as Scald, each with a 30% chance to burn. Scrafty doesn't deal out a whole lot of damage. And Gengar, I knew that Politoed can one-shot with Hydro Pump, 
uh, Talonflame can outspeed and Brave Bird it. And in the rain, Ludicolo was going to outspeed it too. So I felt pretty good about this, especially more so once I put that Assault Vest on Ludicolo. I knew I was going to take a Sludge Bomb. So these are the Pokemon on the top 20 list that I felt pretty confident against. Now let's take a look at what I felt a little bit afraid of. And this is how I decided what my fifth member was going to be. I needed to deal with Pokemon such as Venusaur still. Even with Talonflame and Kangaskhan, I, you just... You, you can't have too many counters to this Pokemon. It was Its usage was on the rise. It does great against rain teams. So I wanted something else that could really hit it pretty hard. Gyarados. Gyarados could come out Thunder Wave. It's got Intimidate for my Kangaskhan and Talonflame. And, you know, Polito Ludicolo don't hit it really hard. Um, so long as it's still got that flying typing, flying water typing. Talonflame. Still scared me, guys. I, I mean, Talonflame's going to come out and do damage. So unless my Talonflame was on the field and free to attack it that turn... I was kind of, I was going to be kind of pinned, and even if my Talonflame is on the field, he could easily switch or protect, and that's going to force, it's going to force my hand to attack him because I can't afford to not attack him with my Talonflame, and um, he could, my opponent could take out my own Talonflame, and really cause me problems. Opposing Mega Kangaskhan really scared me. They could one shot both Pytoad and Ludicolo, do big damage to my own Kangaskhan, and one shot Talonflame, so that scared me. Aegislash scared me. I could hit it with some neutral water moves, which does pretty well. It does all right. Um, Aegislash's defense and King Shield are tremendous. Kangaskhan can't really hit it. And if Rain's up, Talonflame's going to be reduced to trying to Flare Blitz it. And since I'm banded, if he King Shields on the right turn, you know, I'm going to be stuck just doing the same thing over and over and over again. I can't play that mind games with, is he going to King Shield? Is he not? Um, and for for that reason, I one of those... That partially is the reason why I had Taunt on my Choice Band and Talonflame later. It helps against Aegislash, especially when you can Taunt it, and then they can't sub, and they can't King Shield anymore. So, But but as of right now, it was scaring me. Hydreigon was scaring me too. Hydreigon can survive a Mega Kangaskhan's hit, so long as it's built the right way. It's going to survive Talonflame. Um, unless I doubled into it with Polito Ludicolo in the first turn, it was going to probably take something out, especially since most of them were running Choice Scarf at this time. Um, thanks to, you know, Dark Assassin's win and the Nugget Bridge Invitational. I think it was the Invitational. He won something with it. It was pretty scary. Rotom Wash, also giving me problems, could wall Talonflame pretty well. I know I could hit it with Kangaskhan, but with the Citrus Berry, it was going to survive and will o -Wisp me back. Um, I did have Ludicolo, so I'm not at a complete loss here for against Rotom Wash, but I wasn't like, this is a great matchup, and Polito can't really touch it, and that's why I was, you know... Two of my Pokemon here, if they can't touch something, that's scaring me. I can't be reduced to only having two options to deal with something in particular. Um, Meow Stick, Prankster, Thunder Wave. I don't want to deal with that. Rain. My Rain team was about being fast and hitting hard. If Meow Stick's out there either setting up screens, Thunder Waving stuff, it was going to cause me problems. And I think, as far as this list goes, that's what I was mostly afraid of. These eight. So, you know, I was usually you can't find one Pokemon that really fits the bill for everything. Um, and you kind of just got to evaluate what's the biggest threat to my team. What, what do I want to try to reduce? And I still had two slots worth of Pokemon left to help deal with these. But my friend Sumo had been testing a very similar team. And he was using a Hydreigon. Now, Hydreigon, <laughs> it's very interesting. Hydreigon's got some great typing. Um, it was better before Fairy was introduced, but even then, not it's not too bad right now. Hydreigon with Choice Specs can actually take care of basically every single thing on that list. It can one-shot Moe's Rotom Wash. It can one-shot Kangaskhan. About, I think the, the odds are like 60-something percent of the time if it's the 4 HP version. It can one-shot other Hydreigon. It can one-shot Gyarados. Those are all with Draco Meteor. Hydreigon can take a hit from... Talonflame or Mega Venusaur and hit back for you know bigger damage. It's gonna win that trade off if it's especially if it's like a one on one because it'll get the Talonflame in one shot and Mega Venusaur is gonna need like two shots, two or three shots to take it out and you can do you know quite a bit of damage to it in that time if not knock it out. And um, with Dark Pulse you actually have a chance to KO the 252 HP Aegislash and definitely you're able to KO Meow Stick. So once I saw this I was like oh my god, oh my god this this helps a lot. This helps. This this is like everything I needed in one Pokemon. That usually doesn't happen, but in order for that to happen, it needed the specs. It needed the specs, so it got the one shots on most of these things. Um, and by outspeeding a lot of these and one shotting them, 
I'm able to help keep the threats to my the rest of my team down. So Specs Hydreigon, oh my God, what a find! This was this really pulled the team together right here. This one Pokemon. So let's look what we got. We got that Palito Ludicolo, Kangaskhan, Talonflame, and Hydreigon. And as, at, you know, at this point, you can see that I already have three choice items. Um, all of them very necessary for the role that this Pokemon was supposed to perform. And that's how I ended up with these three choice items. I still had an extra slot to, you know, to, to, to put another Pokemon in. But I was feeling pretty good with this team. I started testing it, and I put... I actually didn't run anything in that fifth slot. I like to just run these five so I don't influence my opponent's decisions based off of something I'm not going to run on my team. And just see what's beating me. And I noticed two things. One... Draco Meteor, big problem, big, big, big problem. I have nothing here to take it. I really have nothing here to take an incoming Draco Meteor. So if I saw a Scarf Salamence, if I saw, a, you know, a Scarf Hydreigon, a Noivern, I'm just going to end up eating it and taking a lot of damage from it. But I also noticed another problem. By adding on Hydreigon, I slowly became more weak to fighting type Pokemon. So, fighting types... And Draco Meteor. Scary stuff for this team right now. I needed something that could deal with both of these things. And there's quite a pop Pokemon that um, helps out with both of these particular cases. What can fighting types not hit? Ghost. And what is, you know, what resists Dragon? Steel. One of the very most popular Pokemon in VGC 2014. And one of my personal favorites, Aegislash. Now, I've been using Aegislash for a, a, a long time this season and I was very comfortable with it. I really liked it and I actually think it's one of the best Pokemon in the format. So when I realized that this thing was going to fit on so well, I got really happy and I plopped it on basically immediately. Now if you look at this, so this is the chart I showed you guys a little bit earlier. The green is what I thought I was pretty alright with with my first four. The red is what I was kind of scared of um, before I put on Hydreigon. Obviously one Pokemon can't do everything, but I felt Hydreigon helped me against a lot of these matchups. Let's look at what we have left. Amoongus, Salamence, Azumarill, Mawile, and Aerodactyl on this list. Now, a lot of these things, the rest of my team can chunk. However, if you do think about it, Aegislash does pretty well against these things. It's got Flash Cannon for Aerodactyl. Not that Aerodactyl can do very much back. Mawile, I can set up the substitute. I can Flash Cannon at, at, you know, at my leisure. And if it is running the rare Fire Fang, which I used to run on my Mega Mawile, but if it is in the rain, I'm going to be fine. Azumarill has a really hard time doing a lot of damage to Aegislash, so long as it doesn't have, you know, max attack. Amoongus, not going to be able to spore me if I get a sub up. And if I get a sub up, it's not going to really do anything else. It can um, still Rage Powder away my attacks. It can Giga Drain for probably like 2%. But that's going to, I'm going to handle it very well. And Salamence is only real way to hit it was Fire Blast in the rain. Aegislash is going to be a great Pokemon for me. It's really going to it's really going to help a lot. It also helps against some of the other Pokemon I was having troubles with, um, such as Meow Stick. I can one shot it unless they're built a certain way. Uh, Venusaur has a hard time doing a lot of damage to it. I can hit Gyarados um, pretty you know pretty neutrally, and you'll see that in my Nationals Finals match against Adib. I actually I brought Aegislash because I know I needed it against Gyarados because Gyarados did prove to be a problem for my team. I can hit other Aegislash. I can hit Talonflame because I'll survive the Flare Blitz so long as the rain's up. The rain and the Steel type, great combo there. And, you know, it helps against Mega Kangaskhan because he can't really hit me. So I was like, wow, Aegislash. That's the stuff for me. Now, we're missing two items here before this team's been completed. And um, I'm going to be straightforward. Since I've been testing Aegislash so much on other teams, I was really, really, really comfortable with Leftovers. Like, that's just the item I always went to. Um, I tested out weakness policy a little bit. I tested out a couple other things, but I always came back to leftovers. So I plopped on a leftovers right there just because I knew I was comfortable with it and I'm using it to take hits. I'm using it to take Draco Meteors. I want it to switch in because the rest of my team, we don't have a lot of defense here. No protect so far. Nothing here has protect. I managed to put on a King Shield on Age of Slash, but, you know, let's say sleep's coming, you know, incoming. I can't stop it unless I switch in Ludicolo, or I guess I get a taunt with my banded Talonflame. Let's say Will-O-Wisp is coming. I can't stop it unless I switch in Talonflame to that right, you know, that one exact spot. So I didn't have a lot of defenses here. I'm going to need Aegislash to switch in a lot, to take a lot of abuse, to try to keep this team together. 
So with leftovers, I gave it, you know, I gave it some healing um, capabilities, and it really, really, really ended up helping. Like this slot, both of these last two slots really came together really well for this team. Now Ludicolo still missing an item. Um, Citrus Berry still open. Life Orb still open. Assault Vest is still open. Uh, is there anything else I was considering? That's about it. So I was like, what do I want? What do I want? And I was still a little bit afraid that the team wasn't as defensive as it could be. Obviously, nobody runs triple choice items, um, at least not not normally. And if they do, they don't really win tournaments that often because you don't have a lot of defensive capabilities. Now, if my opponent knew I was not running protect, it makes their job a lot easier. But the fact that I could go into this tournament without them knowing made me think that this idea would work. But I still wanted a little bit more defense. So I plopped on that assault vest. And that really helped me against a lot of common leads. You know, a lot of people these days were running special attackers in the front because they're so afraid of Intimidate. I really wanted to fit Intimidate on this team somewhere. I wasn't able to. Um, but with all these special attackers out there, I was able to lead Politoed, who trick up its sleeve, was able to outspeed a lot of stuff and do um, a lot of damage to it, burn it with Scalds, or straight up one-shot with Hydro Pump in the rain. And a lot of things my opponents thought would KO Ludicolo, such as a Sludge Bomb from Venusaur, I was able to, to, to survive and you know KO its partner um, in time. So the Assault Vest helped shore up my defenses. So I had something else to switch into. I could even, at this point, take a couple Draco Meteors with Ludicolo. And access to Giga Drain would help me get my health back. So that combo there really worked pretty well for me. And so that's how I cemented the team. That's basically the final team in itself, guys. Um, all of the moves and stuff I showed you in part one, also in my report at Nugget Bridge. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. I hope you guys liked it. This is how I put together the team. It took me about, I'd say, two months. Um, and it really just started from that concept of I need to beat, I need to outspeed and beat Garchomp. And it kind of just fell into place from there. All the EV spreads were decided after, like they were all cemented after all the teammates got here because I knew I needed different things. Politoed, at this point I was still a little bit afraid of Talonflame, especially if it, you know, it led against my rain start. So I wanted it to survive every form of Brave Bird except from Adamant Band because I knew I could outspeed and one-shot the Adamant Band with my Jolly Band. So that's how I decided that, you know, that, that move spread and Hydreigons, I knew I wanted to outspeed other choice specs Hydreigon, so I gave it a little bit of extra speed, and I knew I wanted it to survive a return from Kangaskhan, because the only other thing that could do that was my Aegislash, because it couldn't get hit, or my own Kangaskhan, and I'd rather not lose all that HP on my Mega so early, so all those EP spreads came together after it, but this is how the team was formed, and you know, that's my first place team report. I hope you guys liked it. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me. I will um, either, if they're short, I can just answer them in the chat box below. Or if it's like they're longer, I might do another video just based on questions and stuff. Um, the team to me is pretty interesting. It's one of my favorites, but I'm probably pretty biased. And uh, yeah, I ended up winning. So that's, you know, that's the trophy. And that's a great guy. That's Rob. Um, yeah, so it was a good time, guys. It was probably one of the best times for me um, in my life. Because it was just something I've really wanted for a long time. And I was glad that... I was able to do it with a team that I didn't have to adhere, you know, to, to, to strict team building advice that, you know, some people have. I put on what I needed, what I thought would work, and then I played with, with what I was comfortable with. And that really paid off. There's, I think there's a lot to be said for using what you like, no matter what other people say or what other people think, and, you know, just going out there to have fun. And, you know, sometimes it just falls your way. And that day I got really lucky. I had a ton of tough opponents, but I I don't even know. I don't even remember half of these battles. I kind of repressed them because I'm afraid if I think about them again, the results will change. I'm just so afraid that it didn't actually happen, but I'm so glad if you guys watched me and you guys were cheering me on. I read all your comments the nights before on YouTube. I really appreciate it, guys. I was like, I was really nervous. I was nervous that whole weekend, but reading your guys' comments was really cool. I saw you guys cheering me on. So thank you so much, I guys. I hope you enjoyed the PowerPoint. And um, thank you so much for being here with me. I think doing this YouTube channel made me practice a lot more this year than I have ever done so in the past. Uh, and I think it really paid off. So thanks so much, guys. Uh, that's from me to you. And hopefully I'll see you guys next time on my next video.